Welcome to Fast Draw 101. I'm Howard Darby, and today we're learning how to practice without timers. Shooters on the line. Shooters set. For new shooters getting into the sport of Fast Draw, the best method is to have a full timer and target setup. But I know that's unrealistic for a lot of new shooters. So today I'm going to try and show you a few methods that you can use to get good at fast draw without actually having all that equipment. Now of course without a full timing system you can't get your times, but there are two main skills you can learn without a timer. That's the skill to react to a random signal and be able to draw your gun and fire a shot, and secondly to make that shot go where you want it to go. The first of those skills is the ability to react to a random signal. In fast draw we use a 2 to 5 second random delay after the set command is given. And I can shoot 10 shots with that random signal and hit the target every time. And then if I try and shoot all by myself on my own time, I'll usually go about 2 or 3 feet above the target. Everybody's different, but you should make sure that you can draw and fire on a random signal and hit your target because that's what you're going to be doing in competition and if you can't do that you're not going to do too well. You don't want to learn about that the first shot at a contest and find out it's totally different than what you've been doing at home on a, your own time. The first thing you can try for reacting to a random signal is the TV. If you watch a movie the scenes change generally every three to five seconds and what you can do is wait for a scene to change and give that your as your set command and then when the scene changes again, draw and fire it. Uh, that'll get you used to drawing and firing on somebody else's time on a random signal. And uh, it, it's a good way to get into the method of waiting for some command and then going. Another method you could use is to take an extension cord like this and either go get an inline switch like this one here and build it into the cable, or this one came with an inline switch that was already in it. Uh, you can have the switch uh, light in front of you and have somebody behind you use uh, the switch, give you the command shooter align, shooter set. After two to five seconds, they'll press the button, turn on the light, and you can draw on that. The other thing you can do is to take your light and add a flasher to it. Now these ones I bought about 30 years ago and they don't make these ones, but this one here is made by Cooper and there's two styles. There's a button one that goes at the bottom of the socket you screw this, the light bulb on top of it and it will do a random start. Uh, I found that I needed two of these because the random start was about two to three seconds. If I had a two in a row it bumped it up to about five to six seconds and that would give me time to turn on the switch, put my hand on the gun, be ready for the light to come on and then draw and fire after about two to five seconds. When I use this sort of setup myself, I usually have the switch just off to the right of the gun hand, and I'll, give, I'll hit the switch, give myself a command shooter line shooter set, wait for that light to come on when it does draw and fire, turn off that switch, and leave it off for about 15 seconds. That allows the time for the mechanism to cool down, and then next time you turn it on, you'll give yourself the, the right amount of delay, the two to five second delay. If you don't, if you leave it on, and it warms up too much, it, the flashing goes within about a half a second to one second. So turning it off, letting it cool down for a, a little bit before you do the next shot uh, is the best way to use these sort of flashers. One thing to be aware of with these flashers, the only ones I've been able to find available, the Cooper outlet flashers, are not rated all that well. The reviews I've read have shown them to be a little unreliable and about every about 20% of them that you receive just don't work and sometimes they don't last all that long. So just go into it knowing that if you use this sort of thing they might not be that reliable with the ones that are currently on the market. Uh, if you do buy them you might need to use a couple like I said so that they'll uh, the, the delay will be long enough to give you a, a two to five second delay. The second thing you can do is practice your aim, and that's using lasers. Now I know this works because my 13 year old son, who had never shot fast draw before, decided to give it a try a few months before we went to the World Championships for the World Fast Draw Association a couple years ago, and hadn't gone to the club, didn't shoot many wax bullets, um, but he did practice in our basement using a laser system, and he went to the competition and he won the B Division World title uh, shooting against adults who have been doing it for many years. So laser practice can be a real useful way of learning fast draw and uh, getting your aim where you want it to be. 
Now there are two main types of lasers. There's the in-barrel laser and there's the cartridge one that goes in the cylinder. The in-barrel one is not the best one to get. This one is one of the older models and it works well. The new models, they redesign them so that there's a cycle problem. It will take about a second or about a half a second for it to recycle after it goes off. And it goes off from sensing a hit to the gun and that's usually the fa uh, hammer falling and causing a jar to the gun. But also when you cock the gun as you're coming out of the holster and then you fire, that cocking motion will make it blip and fire a laser blast down the barrel and it cannot recover enough for most people when the speeds they shoot in fast draw and when you pull a hammer, pull a trigger and the hammer falls, it hasn't recovered enough and it won't give a blip at that point. So unfortunately the new design of these don't work too well for fast draw. So, so don't go buying one of these unless you know this is one of the older stock that does recover fast enough and does work. This one is old, I use it in practice and it works fine. Now the best laser these days is the in-chamber brand and this is made by SureStrike. It's a 9 millimeter laser but with a 45 Colt adapter. The laser goes for about $100, the adapter is $15, $115 for each one of these. It loads like a regular shell and every time the firing pin strikes the end of the laser you get your blip of light. Of course if you want to uh, have it go every time you'll need six of those but most people fire their shot, cycle, keep firing and you can do that. Sometimes I'll, I'll do my one shot with the laser and then I'll do five dry fires and then another shot with the laser and you can practice that way. It's just whatever you want to do. I'm going to have a couple because I want to shoot doubles and be able to see where each shot's going and record it so I can see where my shots are going. The great thing with the lasers is that they'll even work with your TV. If you're using that as your random start signal, try it and you'll see usually you can tell where the blip went on the TV screen and all you have to do is tell if it was in line with your belt and about the same level as where you're drawing and firing your gun, you know you're shooting pretty much level. Of course a full fast draw setup with a timer and targets is the best way to go but if you don't have that or if you want to practice at home in between practice sessions with your club a TV or a flasher to give you your random start and a laser to figure out whether your level and where your shots are going is the best way to do it without going to all that expense. Hope to see you to shoot someday. Good shooting.